A power supply unit or PSU converts mains AC to low voltage regulated DC power for the internal components of a computer. Modern personal computers universally use switched mode power supplies. Some power supplies have a manual switch for selecting input voltage, while others automatically adapt to the mains voltage. Most modern desktop personal computer power supplies conform to the ATX specification, which includes form factor and voltage tolerances. While an ATX power supply is connected to the main supply, it always provides a 5V standby voltage so that the standby functions on the computer and certain peripherals are powered. ATX power supplies are turned on and off by a signal from the motherboard. They also provide a signal to the motherboard to indicate when the DC voltages are in spec, so that the computer is able to safely power up and boot. The most recent ATX PSU standard is version 2.31 as of mid-2008. Functions The desktop computer power supply changes alternating current from a wall socket to low voltage direct current to operate the processor and peripheral devices. Several direct current voltages are required, and they must be regulated with some accuracy to provide stable operation of the computer. A power supply rail or voltage rail refers to a single voltage provided by a power supply unit PSU, first generation microcomputer and home computer power supply units used a heavy step down transformer and a linear power supply, as used, in for example, the Commodore PET introduced in 1977. The Apple II, also introduced in 1977, was noted for its switched mode power supply, which was lighter and smaller than an equivalent linear power supply would have been, and which had no cooling fan. The switched mode supply uses a ferrite cord high frequency transformer and power transistors that switch thousands of times per second. By adjusting the switching time of the transistor, the output voltage can be closely controlled without dissipating energy as heat in a linear regulator. The development of high power and high voltage transistors at economical prices made it practical to introduce switch mode supplies, that had been used in aerospace, mainframes, mini computers, and color television, into desktop personal computers. The Apple II design by Atari engineer Rod Holt was awarded a patent, and was in the vanguard of modern computer power supply design. Now all modern computers use switched mode power supplies, which are lighter, less costly, and more efficient than equivalent linear power supplies. Computer power supplies may have short circuit protection, over power overload protection, over voltage protection, under voltage protection, over current protection, and over temperature protection. The ATX standard followed some manufacturer's design to have power supplies also supply a standby voltage, so that most of the computer system could be powered off after preparing for hibernation or shutdown, and powered back on by an event. When the computer is powered down but the power supply is still on, it can be started remotely via wake on LAN and wake on ring or locally via keyboard power on if the motherboard supports it. This standby voltage is generated by a smaller power supply inside the unit. The standby power source was a small linear power supply with conventional transformer, which was later changed to a switching power supply, sharing some components of the main unit due to cost and energy saving requirements. Power supplies designed for worldwide use were equipped with an input voltage selector switch that allowed the user to configure the unit for use on local power grid. 
In the lower voltage range, around 115 volts, this switch is turned on changing the power grid voltage rectifier into a voltage doubler in Dellen circuit design. As a result, the large primary filter capacitor behind that rectifier was split up into two capacitors wired in series, balanced with bleeder resistors and varistors that were necessary in the upper input voltage range, around 230 V connecting the unit configured for the lower range to a higher voltage grid usually resulted in an immediate permanent damage. When the power factor correction PFC was required, those filter capacitors were replaced with higher capacity ones, together with a coil installed in series to delay the inrush current. This is the simple design of a passive PFC. Active PFC is more complex and can achieve higher PF, up to 99%. The first active PFC circuits just delayed the inrush. Newer ones are working as an input and output condition controlled step-up converter, supplying a single 400 volts filter capacitor from a wide range input source, usually between 80 and 240 V. Newer PFC circuits also replace the NTC-based inrush current limiter, which is an expensive part previously located next to the fuse. Topic Development Topic Original IBM PC, XT and at Standard The first IBM PC power supply unit PSU supplied two main voltages, plus 5V and plus 12V. It supplied two other voltages, minus 5V and minus 12V, but with limited amounts of power. Most microchips of the time operated on 5V power. Of the 63.5W these PSUs could deliver, most of it was on this plus 5V rail. The plus 1-2V supply was used primarily to operate motors such as in disk drives and cooling fans. As more peripherals were added, more power was delivered on the 12 volts rail. However, since most of the power is consumed by chips, the 5 volts rail still delivered most of the power. The minus 12 volts rail was used primarily to provide the negative supply voltage to the minus 232 rupees serial ports. A minus 5 volts rail was provided for peripherals on the ISA bus, such as sound cards, but was not used by any motherboard other than the original IBM PC motherboard. An additional wire referred to as power good is used to prevent digital circuitry operation during the initial milliseconds of power supply turn on, where output voltages and currents are rising but not yet sufficient or stable for proper device operation. Once the output power is ready to use, the power good signal tells the digital circuitry that it can begin to operate. Original IBM power supplies for the PC model 5150, XT and AT included a line voltage power switch that extended through the side of the computer case. In a common variant found in tower cases, the line voltage switch was connected to the power supply with a short cable, allowing it to be mounted apart from the power supply. An early microcomputer power supply was either fully on or off, controlled by the mechanical line voltage switch, and energy-saving low-power idle modes were not a design consideration of early computer power supplies. These power supplies were generally not capable of power-saving modes such as standby or soft-off, or scheduled turn-on power controls. Due to the always-on design, in the event of a short circuit, either a fuse would blow, or a switched mode supply would repeatedly cut the power, wait a brief period of time, and attempt to restart. For some power supplies the repeated restarting is audible as a quiet rapid chirping or ticking emitted from the device.
Topic ATX standard. When Intel developed the ATX standard power supply connector published in 1995, microchips operating on 3.3 volts were becoming more popular, beginning with the Intel 80486DX4 microprocessor in 1994, and the ATX standard supplies three positive rails, plus 3.3 volts, plus 5V, and plus 12V earlier computers requiring 3.3 volts tip typically derived that from a simple but inefficient linear regulator connected to the plus 5V rail. The ATX connector provides multiple wires and power connections for the 3.3V supply, because it is most sensitive to voltage drop in the supply connections. Another ATX addition was the plus 5 VSB standby rail for providing a small amount of standby power, even when the computer was nominally off. There are two basic differences between it and ATX power supplies, the connectors that provide power to the motherboard, and the soft switch. In ATX style systems, the front panel power switch provides only a control signal to the power supply and does not switch the mains AC voltage. This low voltage control allows other hardware or software to turn the system on and off. Topic: <laughs> ATX 12V standard As transistors become smaller on chips, it becomes preferable to operate them on lower supply voltages, and the lowest supply voltage is often desired by the densest chip, the central processing unit. In order to supply large amounts of low voltage power to the Pentium and subsequent microprocessors, a special power supply, the voltage regulator module began to be included on motherboards. Newer processors require up to 100A at 2 volts or less, which is impractical to deliver from off-board power supplies. Initially, this was supplied by the main plus 5V supply, but as power demands increased, the high currents required to supply sufficient power became problematic. To reduce the power losses in the 5V supply, with the introduction of the Pentium 4 microprocessor, Intel changed the processor power supply to operate on plus 12V, and added the separate 4-pin P4 connector to the new ATX 12V 1.0 standard to supply that power. Modern high-powered graphics processing units do the same thing, resulting in most of the power requirement of a modern personal computer being on the plus 12V rail. When high-powered GPUs were first introduced, typical ATX power supplies were 5V heavy and could only supply 50 to 60% of their output in the form of 12 volts power. Thus, GPU manufacturers, to ensure 200 to 250 W of 12 volts power peak load, CPU plus GPU, recommended power supplies of 500 to 600 W or higher. More modern ATX power supplies can deliver almost all, typically 80 to 90 percent, of their total rated capacity in the form of plus 12V power. Because of this change, it is important to consider the plus 12V supply capacity, rather than the overall power capacity, when using an older ATX power supply with a more recent computer. Low quality power supply manufacturers sometimes take advantage of this overspecification by assigning unrealistically high power supply ratings, knowing that very few customers fully understand power supply ratings. <laughs> plus 3.3 volts and plus 5V rails Plus 3.3 volts and plus 5V rail voltage supplies are rarely a limiting factor. Generally, any supply with a sufficient plus 12V rating will have adequate capacity at lower voltages. 
However, most hard drives or PCI cards will create a greater load on the plus 5V rail. Older CPUs and logic devices on the motherboard were designed for 5 volts operating voltage. Power supplies for those computers regulate the 5 volts output precisely, and supply the 12 volts rail in a specified voltage window depending on the load ratio of both rails. The plus 1-2V supply was used for fan motors, disk drive motors and serial interfaces which also used the minus 12 volts supply. A further use of the 12 volts came with the sound cards, using linear chip audio power amplifiers, sometimes filtered by a 9 volts linear voltage regulator on the card to cut the noise of the motors. Since certain 80386 variants, CPUs use lower operating voltages such as 3.3 or 3.45V motherboards had linear voltage regulators, supplied by the 5V rail. Jumpers or dip switches set the output voltages to the installed CPU's specification. When newer CPUs required higher currents, switching mode voltage regulators like buck converters replaced linear regulators for efficiency. Since the first revision of the ATX standard, PSUs were required to have a 3.3 volts output voltage rail. Rarely, a linear regulator generated these 3.3 volts, supplied from the 5 volts and converting the product of voltage drop and current to heat. In the most common design this voltage is generated by shifting and transforming the pulses of the 5 volts rail on an additional choke, causing the voltage to rise delayed and rectified separately into a dedicated 3.3 volts rail and getting the rising idle voltage cut by a device type TL431, which behaves similar to a Zener diode. Later regulators managed all the 3.3, 5 and 12 volts rails. Cutting the pulse by the voltage regulator the RATO of the 3.3 and 5 volts is controlled. Some of these PSUs use two different chokes, feeding the to the 3.3 volts rail from the transformer to manage changing loads by pulse with ratio between the 3.3 and the 5 volts outputs. In designs using identical chokes, the pulse width manage the ratio, with the Pentium 4 and newer computer generations, the voltage for the CPU cores went below 2V voltage drop on connectors forced the designers to place such buck converters next to the device. Higher maximum power consumption required the buck converters no longer fed from the 5 volts and changed to a 12 volts input, to decrease the current required from the power supply. In drives a small linear voltage regulator is installed to keep the plus 3.3 volts stable by feeding it from the plus 5V rail. Entry-level power supply specification Entry-level power supply specification EPS is a power supply unit meant for high power consumption computers and entry-level servers. Developed by the Server System Infrastructure SSI Forum, a group of companies including Intel, Dell, Hewlett-Packard and others, that works on server standards, the EPS form factor is a derivative of the ATX form factor. The latest specification is V2.93. The EPS standard provides a more powerful and stable environment for critical server-based systems and applications. EPS power supplies have a 24-pin motherboard power connector and an 8-pin plus 1-2V connector. The standard also specifies two additional 4-pin 12 volts connectors for more power-hungry boards one required on 700-800 W PSUs, both required on 850 W plus PSUs. 
EPS power supplies are in principle compatible with standard ATX or ATX12V motherboards found in homes and offices but there may be mechanical issues where the 12 volts connector and in the case of older boards the main connector overhang the sockets. Many PSU vendors use connectors where the extra sections can be unclipped to avoid this issue. As with later versions of the ATX PSU standard, there is also no minus 5 volts rail. Topic: <laughs> Single versus multiple plus 1/2 V rail. As power supply capacity increased, the ATX power supply standard was amended beginning with version 2.0 to include 3.2.4 Power limit, hazardous energy levels Under normal or overload conditions, no output shall continuously provide more than 240 VA under any conditions of load including output short circuit, per the requirement of UL 1950, CSA 950, N 60950, IEC 950 the requirement was later deleted from version 2.3 March 2007 of the ATX12V power supply specifications but led to a distinction in modern ATX power supplies between single and multiple rails. The rule was intended to set a safe limit on the current able to pass through any single output wire. A sufficiently large current can cause serious damage in the event of a short circuit, or can melt the wire or its insulation in the case of a fault, or potentially start a fire or damage other components. The rule limits each output to below 20 amps, with typical supplies guaranteeing 18A availability. Power supplies capable of delivering more than 18A at 12 volts would provide their output in groups of cables called rails. Each rail delivers up to a limited amount of current through one or more cables, and each rail is independently controlled by its own current sensor which shuts down the supply upon excess current. Unlike a fuse or circuit breaker, these limits reset as soon as the overload is removed. Obviously, if the group of wires is limited to 20A, so is each wire in it. Typically, a power supply will guarantee at least 17A at 12 volts by having a current limit of 18.5A plus or minus 8%. Thus, it is guaranteed to supply at least 17A, and guaranteed to cut off before 20A. The current limits for each group of cables is then documented so the user can avoid placing too many high current loads in the same group. Originally, at the time of ATX 2.0, a power supply featuring multiple plus 1-2V rails implied one able to deliver more than 20A of plus 1-2V power, and was seen as a good thing. However, people found the need to balance loads across many plus 1-2V rails inconvenient, especially as higher end PSUs began to deliver far greater currents up to around 2000 W, or more than 150A at 12V, compared to the 240 or 500 W of earlier times, when the assignment of connectors to rails is done at manufacturing time it is not always possible to move a given load to a different rail or manage the allocation of current across devices. Rather than add more current limit circuits, many manufacturers chose to ignore the requirement and increase the current limits above 20A per rail, or provided, single rail, power supplies that emit the current limit circuitry. In some cases, in violation of their own advertising claims to include it, because of the above standards, almost all high power supplies claim to implement separate rails, however this claim was often false, many omitted the necessary current limit circuitry, both for cost reasons and because it is an irritation to customers, the lack was, and is, sometimes advertised as a feature under names like, rail fusion, or current sharing
The requirement was withdrawn as a result, however the issue left its mark on PSU designs, which can be categorized into single rail and multiple rail designs. Both may and often do contain current limiting controllers. As of ATX 2.31, a single rail design's output current can be drawn through any combination of output cables, and the management and safe allocation of that load is left for the user. A multiple rail design does the same, but limits the current supplied to each individual connector or group of connectors, and the limits it imposes are the manufacturer's choice rather than set by the ATX standard. Topic: 12V only supplies. Since 2011, Fujitsu and other Tier 1 manufacturers have been manufacturing systems containing motherboard variants that require only a 12V supply from a custom-made PSU, which is typically rated at 250 to 300 W DC-DC conversion, providing 5V and 3.3V, is done on the motherboard. The proposal is that 5V and 12V supply for other devices, such as HDDs, will be picked up at the motherboard rather than from the PSU itself, although this does not appear to be fully implemented as of January 2012. The reasons given for this approach to power supply are that it eliminates cross-load problems, simplifies and reduces internal wiring that can affect airflow and cooling, reduces costs, increases power supply efficiency, and reduces noise by bringing the power supply fan speed under the control of the motherboard. At least two of Dell's business PCs introduced in 2013, the Optiplex 9020 and Precision T1700, ship with 12V only power supplies and implement 5V and 3.3V conversion exclusively on the motherboard. <laughs> power rating The overall power draw on a PSU is limited by the fact that all of the supply rails come through one transformer and any of its primary side circuitry, like switching components. Total power requirements for a personal computer may range from 250W to more than 1000W for a high-performance computer with multiple graphics cards. Personal computers without especially high-performing CPUs or graphics cards usually require 300 to 500 W. Power supplies are designed around 40% greater than the calculated system power consumption. This protects against system performance degradation, and against power supply overloading. Power supplies label their total power output, and label how this is determined by the electrical current limits for each of the voltages supplied. Some power supplies have no overload protection. The system power consumption is a sum of the power ratings for all of the components of the computer system that draw on the power supply. Some graphics cards, especially multiple cards and large groups of hard drives can place very heavy demands on the 12V lines of the PSU and for these loads the PSU's 12V rating is crucial. The total 12V rating on the power supply must be higher than the current required by such devices so that the PSU can fully serve the system when its other 12V system components are taken into account. The manufacturers of these computer system components, especially graphics cards, tend to overrate their power requirements, to minimize support issues due to too low of a power supply. <laughs> <laughs> Efficiency Various initiatives exist to improve the efficiency of computer power supplies. Climate Savers Computing Initiative promotes energy saving and reduction of greenhouse gas emissions by encouraging development and use of more efficient power supplies. 
80 Plus certifies a variety of efficiency levels for power supplies and encourages their use via financial incentives. Efficient power supplies also save money by wasting less power, as a result they use less electricity to power the same computer, and they emit less waste heat which results significant energy savings on central air conditioning in the summer. The gains of using an efficient power supply are more substantial in computers that use a lot of power. Although a power supply with a larger than needed power rating will have an extra margin of safety against overloading, such a unit is often less efficient and wastes more electricity at lower loads than a more appropriately sized unit. For example, a 900 watt power supply with the 80 plus silver efficiency rating, which means that such a power supply is designed to be at least 85% efficient for loads above 180 W, may only be 73% efficient when the load is lower than 100 W, which is a typical idle power for a desktop computer. Thus, for a 100W load, losses for this supply would be 27W. If the same power supply was put under a 450W load, for which the supply's efficiency peaks at 89%, the loss would be only 56W despite supplying 4.5 times the useful power. For a comparison, a 500 watt power supply carrying the 80 plus bronze efficiency rating, which means that such a power supply is designed to be at least 82% efficient for loads above 100 W, may provide an 84% efficiency for a 100 W load, wasting only 19 W. A power supply that is self certified by its manufacturer may claim output ratings double or more than what is actually provided. Provided. To further complicate this possibility, when there are two rails that share power through down regulating, it also happens that either the 12 volts rail or the 5 volts rail overloads at well below the total rating of the power supply. Many power supplies create the 3.3 volts output by down regulating their 5 volts rail, or create 5 volts output by down regulating their 12 volts rails. The two rails involved are labeled on the power supply with a combined current limit. For example, the 5 volts and 3.3 volts rails are rated with a combined total current limit. For a description of the potential problem, a 3.3 volts rail may have a 10A rating by itself 33W, and the 5 volts rail may have a 20A rating 100W by itself, but the two together may only be able to output 110W in this case, loading the 3.3 volts rail to maximum 33W, would leave the 5 volts rail only be able to output 77W, a test in 2005 revealed computer power supplies are generally about 70-80% efficient. For a 75% efficient power supply to produce 75W of DC output it would require 100W of AC input and dissipate the remaining 25W in heat. Higher quality power supplies can be over 80% efficient. As a result, energy efficient PSUs waste less energy in heat and require less airflow to cool, resulting in quieter operation. As of 2012, some high end consumer PSUs can exceed 90% efficiency at optimal load levels, though will fall to 87 89% efficiency during heavy or light loads. Google's server power supplies are more than 90% efficient. HP's server power supplies have reached 94% efficiency. Standard PSUs sold for server workstations have around 90% efficiency, as of 2010. The energy efficiency of a power supply drops significantly at low loads. Therefore, it is important to match the capacity of a power supply to the power needs of the computer. Efficiency generally peaks at about 50 to 75% load. 
The curve varies from model to model examples of how this curve looks can be seen on test reports of energy-efficient models found on the 80PLUS website. Appearance Most desktop personal computer power supplies are a square metal box, and have a large bundle of wires emerging from one end. Opposite the wire bundle is the back face of the power supply, with an air vent and an IEC 60320 C14 connector to supply AC power. There may be a power switch and or a voltage selector switch. A label on one side of the box lists technical information about the power supply, including safety certifications and maximum output power. Common certification marks for safety are the UL mark, GS mark, TUV, NEMKO, SEMKO, DEMKO, FIMKO, CCC, CSA, VDE, GOSTAR mark and BSMI. Common certificate marks for EMI, RFI are the CE mark, FCC and CTIC. The CE mark is required for power supplies sold in Europe and India. A ROSE or 80 plus can also sometimes be seen. Dimensions of an ATX power supply are 150 mm width, 86 mm height, and typically 140 mm depth, although the depth can vary from brand to brand. Some power supplies come with sleeved cables, which besides being more aesthetically pleasing, also make wiring easier and have a less detrimental effect on airflow. Connectors Typically, power supplies have the following connectors all are Molex USA Inc. Mini Fit Junior, unless otherwise indicated PC main power connector usually called P1, this is the connector that goes to the motherboard to provide it with power. The connector has 20 or 24 pins. One of the pins belongs to the PS on wire it is usually green. This connector is the largest of all the connectors. In older at power supplies, this connector was split in two, P8 and P9. A power supply with a 24-pin connector can be used on a motherboard with a 20-pin connector. In cases where the motherboard has a 24-pin connector, some power supplies come with two connectors one with 20-pin and other with 4-pin which can be used together to form the 24-pin connector. 12 volts only power connector labeled P1, though it is not compatible with the ATX20 or 24-pin connector, this is a 16-pin Molex connector supplying the motherboard with 6 12 volts lines with common returns, a supply OK signal, a PSU on signal and an 11 volts auxiliary supply. One pin is left unused. 12 volts only system monitoring P10 this is a 171822-8 amp or equivalent connector carrying a supply to the PSU fan and sense returns ATX12V4 pin power connector also called the P4 power connector a second connector that goes to the motherboard in addition to the main 24-pin connector to supply dedicated power for the processor. For high-end motherboards and processors, more power is required, therefore EPS-12V has an 8-pin connector. 4-pin peripheral power connectors, these are the other, smaller connectors that go to the various disk drives of the computer. Most of them have four wires, two black, one red, and one yellow. Unlike the U.S. standard mains electrical wire color coding, each black wire is a ground, the red wire is plus 5V, and the yellow wire is plus 12V. In some cases these are also used to provide additional power to PCI cards such as Firewire 800 cards. 
four pin molex japan limited power connectors usually called mini connector mini molex or berg connector this is one of the smallest connectors that supplies a 3.5 inch floppy drive with power in some cases, it can be used as an auxiliary connector for accelerated graphics port AGP video cards. Its cable configuration is similar to the peripheral connector. Auxiliary power connectors – There are several types of auxiliary connectors designed to provide additional power if it is needed. Serial ARTA power connectors, a 15-pin connector for components which use SATA power plugs. This connector supplies power at three different voltages, plus 3.3, plus 5, and plus 12V, in three pins per wire, one designed to precharge capacitive loads on for hot plugging design backplanes. 6-pin Most modern computer power supplies include 6-pin connectors that are generally used for PCI Express graphics cards, but a newly introduced 8-pin connector should be seen on the latest model power supplies. Each PCI Express 6-pin connector can output a maximum of 75W, 6 plus 2 pin for the purpose of backwards compatibility, some connectors designed for use with high-end PCI Express graphics cards feature this kind of pin configuration. It allows either a 6-pin card or an 8-pin card to be connected by using two separate connection modules wired into the same sheath, one with 6 pins and another with 2 pins. Each PCI Express 8-pin connector can output a maximum of 150W An IEC 60320 C14 connector with an appropriate C13 cord is used to attach the power supply to the local power grid. <laughs> Modular power supplies A modular power supply provides a detachable cable system, offering the ability to remove unused connections at the expense of a small amount of extra electrical resistance introduced by the additional connector. This reduces clutter, removes the risk of dangling cables interfering with other components, and can improve case airflow. Many modular supplies have some permanent multi-wire cables with connectors at the ends, such as PC main and 4-pin molex, though newer supplies marketed as fully modular allow even these to be disconnected. Topic: <laughs> Other form factors. The thin form factor with a 12 volts connector TFX -V configuration has been optimized for small and low profile micro 8s and flex 8s system layouts. The long narrow profile of the power supply fits easily into low profile systems. The fan placement can be used to efficiently exhaust air from the processor and core area of the motherboard, making possible smaller, more efficient systems using common industry components. Most portable computers have power supplies that provide 25 to 200 W in portable computers, such as laptops. There is usually an external power supply, sometimes referred to as a power brick due to its similarity, in size, shape and weight, to a real brick which converts AC power to 1 DC voltage most commonly 19 volts, and further DC-DC conversion occurs within the laptop to supply the various DC voltages required by the other components of the portable computer. External power supply could send data about itself power, current and voltage ratings to the computer. For example, genuine Dell power source uses one-wire protocol to send data by third wire to the laptop. The laptop then refuse non-matching adapter. Some computers use a single voltage 12 volts power supply. All other voltages are generated by voltage regulator modules on the motherboard. Topic 
Topic: Lifespan. Lifespan is usually specified in mean time between failures (MTBF), where higher MTBF ratings indicate longer device life and better reliability. Using higher quality electrical components at less than their maximum ratings or providing better cooling can contribute to a higher MTBF rating because lower stress and lower operating temperatures decrease component failure rates. An estimated MTBF value of 100,000 hours, roughly 140 months at 25 degrees Celsius and under full load is fairly common. Such a rating expects that, under the described conditions, 77% of the PSUs will be operating failure-free over three years 36 months. .Equivalently, 23% of the units are expected to fail within three years of operation. For the same example, only 37% of the units fewer than a half are expected to last 100,000 hours without failing. The formula for calculating predicted reliability, R T, is R T equals E minus T, TMTBF where T is the time of operation in the same time units as the MTBF specification, E is 2.71828, and TMTBF is the MTBF value as specified by a manufacturer, power supplies for servers, industrial control equipment, or other places where reliability is important may be hot swappable, and may incorporate N plus 1 redundancy, if N power supplies are required to meet the load requirement, one extra is installed to provide redundancy and allow for a faulty power supply to be replaced without downtimes. Wiring diagrams Topic Testing Equals A power supply tester is a tool used to test the functionality of a computer's power supply. Testers can confirm the presence of the correct voltages at each power supply connector. Testing under load is recommended for the most accurate readings. Equals Topic. See also. Equals. IEC 62700 DC power supply for notebook computers. List of computer power supply manufacturers. Power management. Power supply. Quiet PC. Switched mode power supply applications equals equals notes <laughs>